Hey y'all, I'm back with another video and I'm gonna show y'all how to get some super crispy square nails. So for starters, the tips that I'm using are Easy Basket Square Tips. Oh, I'm lying. No, I'm not. I'm using A Galore Standard Square Tips, but I say use Easy Basket because these tips are hella thick, like, they thick and they are super curved. But since I was doing short, I was like, it really don't even matter. And when I was cutting one of them, like the tip cracked. So no shade to Miss Girl A Galore, but yeah, use Easy Basket Square. Now I'm just taking my two forms stuck together and making sure that they even and then I, she had ended up wanting to go even shorter than this. So, yeah, y'all, I'm finna cut them. And then these scissors, I got these from Tulip Real Deal. Y'all go on Tulip. Tulip got some good stuff. And I'm going ahead and just measuring them cuticle to cuticle. And then just cutting. And then, yeah. I was like, dang, girl, you want them shorter? She was like, yeah, go down just a little bit. I'm like, oh. okay, girl, we can do short. We can do short. And then if y'all see my nails, I know I never record my nails. Let me, because I don't know how to do my nails. Y'all, this is the nail that cracked. So I'm over here trying to put some glue on it and spray it. And then watch, y'all saw that? Y'all saw that? It foamed up. I'm like... Yeah, you're done. You're done. Probably never using these ever again. But anyway, I don't know how to do my own nails. So y'all that be asking me, oh, record yourself doing your nails. I don't know how to do my nails. My nails be trash whenever I do them. So I don't know y'all. My nails, like they don't be complete trash, but it don't be that good. <laughs> it don't be that good because I don't. I stopped doing my nails for a long time, so I don't really remember how to do them no more. So, yeah, they don't really be looking that good. But anyway, I'm measuring them again, cutting again, and we're going shorter. So boom, when it comes to shaping square, less is more. A lot of people start overthinking it and just keep shaping, keep shaping when you ain't even got to do all that. So I'm just going to literally shape the tips of it. I'm not going to shape the sides because first of all, the tips should fit sidewall to sidewall anyway. So if you got a perfect size tip or you foul it to fit their nail, all you got to do is foul the bottom half like... The sides are already good. Well, with the tips I use, the sides are good. But y'all see, y'all ain't even got to shape the sides for real. And then I use an 8080. I like to use the round file because I can see a little bit better. I don't really care to use the square file. But no shade to a girl that uses the square file. Because sometimes I do like using the square, but I can't see. I need to see. So yeah, I just filed the bottom half, y'all. Y'all really ain't even got to do too much. You can file the size a little bit, but I mean, it really ain't no point because if you want square square, the shape needs to gradually come from your client's sidewall. So it's best to leave it be, to be honest. But yeah, anyway, child. I'm just going to shake that. I left this in real time. I left the, the application I'm going to do, I left that in real time too. But all that cutting I had to do earlier, mm -mm. speed it up. Boom. Y'all see me putting in that work. And look, it's easy. Square. Didn't even have to do too much. Now I'm just going to take my sandy band, go ahead and blend those tips in. 
don't spend too long on this part because literally it's like it's a big deal but it's not a big deal for real so blend it in and i don't really get the blending the well fouling the tip i don't really get that part i don't do that because now that to me is definitely a waste of time but i think some people do it because they just like the way it look i don't really know but i just foul it to blend it in i don't foul the whole tip All right, y'all, let's get up into this application. For starters, I do sell a liquid to powder ratio tutorial. It'll be the first link in my description box. So if you are interested in that, go check that out. Now, I am using Not Polish White 02. So far, this is the best white that I've used. It's not sticky um, and it's not super runny, as y'all can see. And it's very easy to work with. Now, if y'all know any better whites, let me know. But so far, this is the best white I've used. Now, I decided to do a 2B method with these simply because they're super short. And for one, I'm not going to do a 1B method because I feel like that process is just way too risky. Sometimes it, just, it gets mixy accidentally. You know, I'd just rather be safe than sorry. So I'm just going to split this up into 2Bs and we're going to work with it. Now, the main reason why I was like, don't foul your sides whenever you pre-shape is because whenever you lay this acrylic down you're literally just gonna follow the acrylic with the shape of the nail and since the tip should go from sidewall to sidewall anyway i mean it should be a perfect fit already so i'm using my brush and right there on the sidewall where i'm wiping it now that's the main part people struggle with whenever they do um square that part right there you need to tuck that in any acrylic that's protruding past their sidewall is going to make the nails look fat wide and we don't want that okay that's not the look we're going for so use your brush and before the acrylic is dry make sure you tuck those sidewalls in period my brush is a size 12 um I got this from Tulip Real Deal again. And if you have any lint or anything in your acrylic, go ahead and get that out first and then proceed with the rest of your nail. Now, when it comes to the application period, you want to have the top as smooth as possible so you have less work to do whenever you start fouling and shaping, right? So smooth the white out completely and then push the sides in to keep your shape now whenever you do the tip part right here you want to go back and forth between doing a tip and then swiping on the sides so that way you can keep your boxy shape if you get rid of your corners you're not going to have that crispy sharp square so make sure before you move on to your next bead that you go ahead and pat those in place before you move on because sometimes uh, well not sometimes acrylic still moves whenever you know you think you're done with it so you know keep going back and forth between the sides and the tip until it's set and you know it's not going to keep moving and then you can move on now whenever it comes to the cuticle area make sure you're not working with too wet of a bead and too much product when i do this next nail my bead is going to be too wet and you're gonna see that it's gonna pretty much flood the cuticle. So definitely make sure that your ratio is not off, girl. I was over there key, key, key and running my mouth. And that's why I got thrown off guard, okay? But I should have drained my bead off first. Now for this set though, I didn't drain a lot of the beads because this white is just so bomb. If you don't have this white, go get it. Um, so yeah, I did drain this one a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pushing it in, pushing it in. Tuck those sides in right there while I'm pushing it. Tuck that in. That part you do not want fat. If you make it fat, the whole rest of the nail is going to be fat. Alright? So, 
go ahead and blend that out blend it out and then you want to regain your shape so like i said go whenever you cut the tip off with that extra product go back on the sides and glide down do that go ahead and pinch that off period look at that looking like baby you is straight from the dentist with some dentures that's what it's giving a clean white square set all right so this one i got my bead was too wet i didn't drain it so boom look right there now with white and red and black well those are the main colors be careful not to get that all up in the sidewalls and stuff because it'll like stain like it'll stay in the crease even if you wipe it off it'll still be in that crease like you can tell on that other side that left side it's still in the crease even though i got it out of there look i'm still trying to uh, -uh baby it's stuck you should have drained the bead so and then i gotta add a little bit more to the cut cuticle area because it got thinned out because it was so runny so adding some more to the cuticle area and this is in real time guys real time all right moving on y'all i did a good job of keeping my containers in the frame because i know a lot of times y'all be wanting to see me dip into the powder and stuff like that but my desk is very big and for the most part i have my powders and my liquid like all the way on the right side so i did good this time even though i forgot to show the powder but i'm glad i was just working with white now for some reason i had struggles with this nail i don't know why oh i think i may have put a tip on that was just slightly smaller and i think that's why i was struggling but i don't know it's the same process y'all over and over again I definitely added too much to this nail like I said y'all I was running my mouth child and I definitely grabbed too much product but I'm gonna thin it out later it's just best for me to just go ahead and completely smooth it out now one thing I will say white is still very soft no matter what brand you get it from so I found myself dragging product trying to blend it out and I was like this is so weird like it was so weird but you see me still trying to you know back brush it up and then keep my square at the bottom but yeah I, I grabbed a little bit too much on that one so now we finna do the thumb a lot of times people struggle with the thumb because of course it's wider and there's more room for for error so we finna break it down. Now, instead of doing the thumb in two beads, I did it in three. Because like I said, the thumb is wider. I'm not finna try to pick up a big bead trying to cover that top half. No, we not doing it. This works smarter, not harder, period. Because even though it's definitely possible, the more product you have, the harder it is to work with. Because you gotta control it so much. So, I say break it up so you know for a fact that you can have a smooth application now three beads is fine i draw the line at five six seven eight nine ten <laughs> that's where i draw the line but hey whatever gets the job done period but for a solid set try to work on not using that many beads because that's gonna slow you down especially for a short square set try not to use too, way too many beads now let's get into this second one so i'm going to place it right above that one go over to the edges now acrylic self levels a little bit 
So if you just nudge it to a spot, it'll move there on its own. So that's how you can avoid just flooding the sidewalls by putting too much product over there. Just a little bit and let it kind of run it on its own. Now with the cuticle area, place it further back and then nudge the product up. The acrylic is going to spread itself and literally melt into the cuticle area. Just got to make sure that your bead is not too runny. And then all you got to do is just blend that in. And then check your sidewalls again. And that's it. Like the acrylic is going to move into the cuticle. Just nudge it there. And then just leave it alone. Whenever you start overworking the product, that's when you just start making unnecessary dents. Unnecessary just holes in the nail. Thinning the nail out. Because you keep over brushing it. So yeah now this is the fouling part i didn't show the drilling part i didn't do it yet though i'm gonna do it after i reshape normally i drill before i reshape but since the application was so smooth i was like okay let me just hit it with this foul real quick and then i could just run my drill over it and be done so pretty much i'm sticking to the same fouling techniques when I first did the tips, except now that it's acrylic on the actual sidewalls, I filed those in some more to make sure it's not protruding past her nail and making her nail look fat. And that's pretty much it. I also have a detailed shaping video tutorial that is also the first link in my bio go check that out if you want me to go more in detail as to what exactly am i doing and how do i know when to stop fouling and pretty much you know what to look for and stuff like that And y'all, I think this finger was a little bit longer. That's why I'm like going crazy on it. Because I think it was a little bit longer. Yeah. So I'm shortening it. it I could have used my drill. But I was like, I'll just hand foul it. So, and again, this is in real time. So, yeah. Then I'm measuring on that one. Then I see, okay, it's still long, sis. You need to foul a little bit more. So I'm fouling that one. Sometimes it happens, it's just best to catch it when you do. Ain't no big deal though. When y'all fouling, make sure you directly up against the side of the nail. A lot of times people wanna start fouling underneath and you can definitely foul underneath, but fouling underneath is for like you know how sometimes C-curve tips or flattened tips, they have that dip and you just gotta foul that dip up. That's for that or just cleaning it up. But as far as the shape goes, you need to make sure you directly 
up against the nail tip, especially right there at the tip where I'm filing right now. A lot of people have it angled so far down that they're like messing up the corner and they're filing underneath. You need to almost make sure. Oh, look at them, y'all. Yeah, look like she's straight from Columbia with a new set of veneers. Look at them. Period. Don't play. This Them is some crispy white squares. Anyway, forget whatever I was talking about. But yeah, y'all, this is the end of the video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.